Hello, how's it going? In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about floating pins with Arduino. Now, usually you might think, hey, if something's floating, you know, that's like a good thing. You, your ship crashes, you're floating in the ocean, and hey, you're floating, that's better than sinking, right? Well, with electronics, that's not the case. You know, think about like hair dryer in the tub. You know, that doesn't necessarily mix. So, the bottom line is floating pins are bad. What this tutorial is going to seek to answer is, well, why the heck are they bad? What's, what really is a floating pin? What's the deal there? Let's go ahead and set up a reference for this conversation. Sometimes if you've got your Arduino and you want to read some type of digital input, okay? So for example, let's say you have this push button and you want to tell whether or not the push button's being pressed down or it's not being pressed. So it's either on or it's off. There's like two states to it, right? Or maybe you have some other type of sensor that gives you, again, like a binary answer, either on or off. For example, maybe you've got some like water detector and either water's present or it's not present. And so you have this, you have these sensors or a button, whatever, hooked up to a digital pin on your Arduino. And then you're simply reading the voltage from that pin using the digital read function. And you're trying to find out, well, is the pin high or is the pin low? So let's, let's use a simple push button circuit to figure out what this whole floating business is about. So I've got my Arduino board here and it's hooked up to a breadboard and I've got a push button on that breadboard. One side of the push button goes to ground and the other side of the push button goes to digital pin two and digital pin two is where I'm gonna sample the voltage. I'll, use, I'll be using the digital read function to determine the voltage there. So you can see with this setup, when I press the button, digital pin two will quote unquote see ground voltage, it will see low voltage, and then that will return a low. So in my program, I'll use an if statement, and I'll say, if, you know, digital pin two is low, then go ahead and do whatever, you know, maybe we'll turn on an LED. Well, the question becomes, what is happening at pin two when I'm not pressing the button? And that's kind of the key here. So I would, I'm just curious what you think. What is happening at pin two when I'm not pressing the button? Well, you know what, why don't we just go look? Let's just check it out for ourselves. So let's go ahead and go to the Arduino IDE and mess around a little bit. So here we are in the Arduino IDE and I'm gonna go ahead and go to File, Examples, Basics, Bare Minimum. And I'm just gonna set up a simple sketch. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use a pin that's going to designate pin two, that will be the input pin. Now I'm gonna to go to Setup. I'm gonna set the mode of that pin input to an input, just like we talked about before. And then I'm gonna start serial communication so I can uh, look at information coming over the serial monitor. And you know, by the way, if this, you know, if some of this stuff isn't making sense, just go ahead and check out my other videos. I got a ton of other videos on this type of stuff. Okay, a little bit of housekeeping. All right, so now let's go down to the loop. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna do the digital read of that pin. So remember, that's kind of the premise of this. I want to determine what the voltage is at that digital pin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare and initialize a variable, and I'm going to set that variable equal to the output of the digital read function. Let's do that. Okay, so I've declared an initialized sensor value, and that variable is going to hold the output of the digital read function. And digital read is going to return either high or low. And that's going to look like 1 or 0. So 1 is high and 0 is low. Now I want to look at that value. So in order to see that value, I'm going to use this serial write function and we'll display it on the serial monitor window. Okay, there we are. I might have said write. I meant to say print. So serial print. And I'm actually using print line. And what that does is, well, you'll see it when we look at the serial monitor. It allows the a carriage return at the end of every value return. So let's go ahead and verify that and let's upload it. And then let's look at the serial monitor. Okay, now look at that serial monitor. Notice what's going on here. There's ones and zeros, ones and zeros, ones and zeros. It looks pretty random. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off auto scroll so we can see this. You can tell there's really no, yeah, maybe there's some random sequence to this, but for the most part, it looks just like noise. So I feel like this answers the question what is going on at pin number two when the button is not being pressed? And the answer is, well, 
we really have no clue. It's who knows? It's just floating out there. We, we've got no idea what this pin's going to do. So is this a problem? Well, does it matter? Well, yes, it does matter. And why does it matter? Well, let's go ahead and write our program with the circuit set up this way and see how our LED performs. So I'm going to go ahead and close the serial monitor window. And let's add a little more code. I'm going to add an if statement. OK, so I added an if else statement. Now, th this if statement is saying, if sensor value is equal to low, then do a digital write pin 13 high. So pin 13, that, that is the, it's got a built-in LED on most Arduino boards. If you're using the Arduino Uno like I am, then you'll definitely have a built-in LED there. So I'm saying, if sensor value is low, I want you to write the pin high. And that might seem a little counterintuitive. So just think back to the circuit. We know when we're pressing the button, pin two is then connected to ground. So pin two will be reading zero volts when we're pressing the button. And zero volts is low. So we're pressing the button. Sensor value is going to be assigned to the output of digital read. If we're pressing the button, then digital read would be equal to zero. So sensor value is zero. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, if is sensor value zero, is it low? If it is, go ahead and turn the LED on. Uh, do a digital write to pin 13 high. And then if it's anything else, then turn it low. So what we're supposed to be doing here is when I'm pressing the button, the light comes on. When I'm not pressing the button, the light goes off. So let's go ahead and see how this works with our current setup. Now before we upload it, we need to set digital pin 13 as an output. So let's do that. Okay, and then I'll upload it. Now, I've uploaded it to my board, and as I look at my Arduino, the LED at pin 13, it's kind of like pulsating. It looks like it's rapidly blinking. Okay, so first off, what's weird is it's on in the first place. Even if it's rapidly pulsating, that shouldn't be happening because I'm not even touching the button. Now, when I touch the button, it stops pulsating, and the LED comes on a little brighter, and then I let it go, and it starts pulsating again. So what, what is the deal here? Well, why don't we go ahead and look at the serial monitor again? Okay, well, the serial monitor is doing the same crazy thing. See, we're getting all these ones and zeros, these kind of random spattering of ones and zeros. So the problem is with the floating pin is that regardless of what I'm doing at the push button, there's noise interfering with that pin, and that indeterminate value is giving false positives for my button press. I'm not pressing the button. We're still getting a low reading at that pin, and that's not good. That's not right. So how do we solve this? Well, what we use in this instance is a pull-up resistor. A pull-up resistor is going to tie that floating pin to a known voltage, a known state. And in this case, we're going to tie it to 5 volts. So let's look at this new breadboard layout using an external pull-up resistor. So now I've got, in addition to the right side of the push button being attached to pin 2, now I've got a pull-up resistor that's going to 5 volts. Now it's just a resistor like any other resistor. It's just pull up because it's the way we're using it. And what we're doing is we're pulling that pin to a specific state. And in this case it's going to be high because we've connected it to 5 volts. So let's ask our question again. What is the value at pin 2 when we are doing a digital read and the button is not being pressed? Well now we can see that the pin's going to be reading 5 volts because it's connected to 5 volts through that 10k resistor. We know the answer to our question. So let's go ahead and go back to the Arduino IDE and check if that makes sense on the serial monitor. Alright, so let's go ahead and go to the serial monitor and now we can see it's all ones. So it's always high. I'm not pressing the button, I'm not doing any of that stuff, but serial monitor is returning one. Yay, we know the answer to our question. The pin is not floating anymore. Maybe it's like it's in a lifeboat now. I don't know. I guess a lifeboat's floating, but you get the gist. So now everybody's hunky-dory. I'm not getting these false inputs. So now let me go ahead and press the button, and my LED comes on. Is that cool or what? So I let go, I press it, LED comes on, and I let go, and it goes off. So if we think about this circuit, when we're pressing the button, the path of least resistance is what for pin 2? The path of least resistance is to go to ground, and so it's seeing that ground voltage. When we're not pressing the button, pin 2 has no options. It's going to see the 5 volts coming off of the 5 volt pin on the Arduino, and that's why it would be reading 5 volts or high. Oh, well, hey, thanks a ton for joining me. 
in this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Have a great day. Bye. La, 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 la,